I love the song. Highly appropriate. It's true. Amen. That when love was born, in 1 John, the Bible says that we are to love one another. Love is of God. Everyone who loves God knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. Amen. So it is true. Love was born. Um, love it. How, how desperately are you trying to spend your time with Jesus? Is He number one on your list? Today we're going to look at just a few people that could not wait for the Messiah to be born. Number one, you know, when the angel come, came to Mary and said, you know, highly favored are you that you're going to have a child and he, his name shall be called, you know, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty, the mighty Prince, of, his name is going to be Emmanuel. God with us. And she says, hey, you know, I don't know a man. I haven't ever been with a man, so how can I have this child? And the angel says, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And so the Holy Ghost was what allowed her to have God in the flesh. So therefore, He was a human because He was born from a human, Mary. But yet He was God because the Holy Spirit was the one who birthed this baby. Amen. If we could look at a couple of verses in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 verse 25. If you don't have a Bible and you want one, just look hopefully in the middle of each. I know that all the seats have been moved around. Uh, the uh, Hispanic church service had a wonderful Christmas uh, dinner. So all the chairs are moved around. So if you had your Bible left in the chair, it might be the Sherry might be using it right now. And so, uh, so again, try to follow along with these verses because I think they'll hopefully speak to your heart. Luke chapter two, verse twenty-five. After Jesus was born, you know what? Luke chapter two, verse twenty-one. Uh, after Jesus was born, there are certain customs that the Jews do. Uh, one of those customs were not uh, really practiced in the rest of the world. Uh, so he was going to go and have his circumcision by the priest after a few days. And so uh, we're going to look at that. Luke chapter 2 verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. Jesus. Notice there how that if you have a King James, notice how that it capitalized every letter, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Is, that, is that in your Bible? Yes. Everything is capitalized because this is God in the flesh. This is His name. Amen. We're supposed to honor Jesus. It seems as if people don't really even understand what honor is. You know, we tell our children all the time, you've got to honor your father and mother. Well, you know, our adults need to honor their fathers and mothers too. Amen. Because even if they've passed away, we still need to honor them. Well, this, this Jesus is to be honored and revered. And it seems like the society that we're living in now, it seems to just think Jesus is just as another prophet like Muhammad. Well, that is not the case. Amen. Muhammad was not God in the flesh. No. Muhammad could not conquer the death and the grave. Muhammad couldn't do any of those things. Uh, even Buddha himself, I mean, he tried to pray and seek nirvana, but, you know, he really needed to be looking for Jesus. Amen. And it was, it was interesting because the rest of the world, while this is going on, the rest of the world is just living in their own pagan ways. I mean, China was going on and they were trying their best to honor their God. Egypt there, they were trying to honor their gods. But this is the God that we serve. He's the God of gods. He's the one who made all the other powers. He's the one who made all of that. And so it was capitalized because it's supposed to be honored and revered. And it says at his, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Yes. So literally the angel Gabriel, we know the story, he came to Mary and he says, you're going to have a child, his name's going to be Jesus, and so, just like that, without even knowing a man, she become pregnant. 
I mean, just imagine, you know, we sang that song the other day, Mary, Did You Know? Well, more than likely, Mary knew that something was really going on because, hey, she's pregnant and she had never even been with a man. Amen. And so again, this is a miracle. This is a miracle birth. Verse 22, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, meaning that after the baby was born, she had to heal up, and after she was healed up and ready to, you know, move on, which, again, we uh, understand, most of the ladies here understand if you've had a child, that, you know, it takes a while for you to get back to where you can get goings. Well, that's why the law was written in the Old Testament for these ladies so that they could have their purification uh, uh, according to the law of Moses were accomplished. It says, verse 22, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It isn't this beautiful? It's like they are so interested in making it to the temple because their baby, regardless of whose baby you have, you really need to be seeking the temple of the Lord. Amen. You need to be seeking church. A lot of people don't really even put church on their list of things that they need to do. It's got to be top priority. Amen. Be, you know, for you to get together with other people and to worship Jesus Christ, I mean, really, this morning, so far, I believe that everyone here had that in their mind that today I'm going to worship Jesus. I want to worship, worship Him with the church that God's called me to. Amen. And you're all here, and it's just beautiful. But I love listening to music. You can't hear back there what I can hear up here. It's glorious. It's good. I think that when we go to heaven, God's just going to pick all of you and say, hey, this is my own choir right here. <laughs> Could you just imagine? Because see, it was all done to glorify Him. Amen. No one here tried their best to sing to impress anybody other than Jesus. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, I would not utter a single note. I mean, you know, some of you can sing like two octaves. Maybe even Mary might be able to sing three octaves. Well, I, can, I, I know three notes. You know? But the deal is, is God already knows my voice. He created my voice. And He didn't create my voice so that I could say foolish things and nonsense and bad words. He did not, he did not create my mouth for that. He created my voice so that I could praise Him. I could glorify Him. I could tell others about Jesus Christ. Amen. God was born in the flesh. And it's, it's just so amazing that people, people, they don't honor that. This is your only chance to have everlasting life. Amen. And He had it all planned out from all of those kings in the Old Testament who faltered and failed and served other gods. He already had a plan and people knew what the prophets were talking about. Pro the prophet Micah said, your child, shall, the, 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 the Redeemer will be born in Bethlehem. They already knew they were expecting the Messiah. So remember that. They took Him to the temple. They took Him to church to present Him to the Lord. Meaning they dedicated their baby to God the Father. Amen. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that op openeth the womb shall be called what? Holy Lord. Lord. Every one of our babies that are in the womb are holy to the Lord. Amen. 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 How dare anyone destroy a creation of God? Amen. So now, this creation of God is holy. But Jesus, He was God in the flesh. And they did everything according to the way the law was written. Verse 24, And to offer a sacrifice to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Meaning this, they even... Listen, I think John was looking this up the other day. Why did they offer a sacrifice to the Lord? They offered a sacrifice to the Lord to praise Him and thank Him, but also they were in flesh and they were sinners. It's true. So when people say that Mary is the queen of the universe and never sinned, why would they offer a sacrifice? She 
was just like us. Correct. And she was a human who was born in a sinful world and she gave birth and she was chosen to do God's work. Ladies and gentlemen, regardless of what your past looks like, regardless of what your resume of sins look like, regardless if you've sinned more than anybody else, Jesus Christ offers an opportunity for you to become one of His children. Amen. And you are qualified to do God's work. Amen. Your voice is qualified to be an evangelist. Right. Your voice is qualified to be a prophet. Your being is qualified to worship Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary was no different and we should never think that she is more holy than anyone else, but she is highly favored. Amen. Wouldn't you be highly favored? Amen. That if God just came and said, I'm going to let you birth the Messiah of the world. Amen. And just imagine Joseph, her soon-to-be husband, was probably thinking, you know, praise the Lord that I get to parent the Savior of the world for all of eternity. I mean, imagine that. So they go to the temple. They offer a pair of turtle doves and young pigeons. Verse 25, look at this. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And so, I mean, he's waiting for Israel to be complete. They have been waiting since the Old Testament, at least 600 years. They were waiting, maybe perhaps 600. They were waiting for there to be a king that would rule and reign forever in Jerusalem. Amen. They've been waiting for that. And it seems like every single time Israel kept messing up and sinning and God had to punish them. Why did He punish them? Hey, if you love someone, you want to correct them. You want them to know that when they do things wrong, there are consequences. God already told them there were consequences and they still served other gods. So the Babylonians took over and, drunk, drunk, and then the Medes and the Persians took over. Eventually the Romans took over. But the people who honored God were still waiting for the Messiah. Take this in consideration. No matter where we're at, no matter what the government does, no matter if we go bankrupt, we who are followers of Jesus Christ are waiting and looking for Jesus to come back. Amen. We should always be thinking, no matter who claims to be the Savior of the world, we already have our Savior. Hallelujah. And now... Jesus Christ, we should be looking forward to Him. Looking forward to Him taking us home. This man, Simeon, was waiting for the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Praise God for that. Amen? Amen. It says that He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Look what happens. And the Holy Ghost was upon Him. The Holy Ghost works like Nobody's business. He's all over the place. He was working and the Holy Spirit allowed her to receive the Savior of the world. The Holy Spirit comes to this man. Are you filled with the Spirit of God? Amen. Do you know that you know that you know that if you were to die today that the Spirit of God within you makes you perfect before God? Amen. If you don't know that, you're in the right place. Because this is the place to where you can know for sure that you have accepted Jesus Christ and that He gave you a new birth. Amen. Jesus said to Nicodemus, what? Ye must be born again. How can I be born again? Can I enter into my mother's womb a second time? You must be born of the Spirit. Amen. You are a, another being in the spiritual realm. That's right. A lot of people think, well, that's just too wild. I don't think that I can have faith in that. Well, eventually you have to have faith in that or you don't have enough faith to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Amen. 
You have to believe that. You have to have enough faith to believe that you will be in heaven when this body crashes. Amen. He was waiting. The Holy Ghost came upon him. Look what the Holy Ghost tells him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Amen. I have spoken to a handful of people in today's... And I'm not trying to predict when Jesus is going to come because in my opinion, if I was Jesus, I'd come right now. Amen. Okay? So praise the Lord that I'm not Jesus because maybe you have loved ones who need to be saved. Remember that. Remember that. Amen. Greater love hath no man than he lays life down for his friend. Let me Amen. tell you, if you have a loved one who is not saved, you should love them so much that you're willing to pass away before Christ's return so that they can get saved. Amen. Have you ever thought about that? Yes. But just think of it. You should love their soul that much. If I should pass away before any of you, then praise the Lord for me. And if I should pass away, this church is going to still keep having church. Amen? Amen. Amen? We're still going to be here. We're raising up a generation of young folk who are going to keep this church alive. Amen. Because we preach directly from this. It, and the way we do things, trust me, is different than most of the churches. Who goes through the Bible anymore? Very few churches. We've got to have Bible preachers. Amen. Yes. Because people need to know the Word of God. And verse 26, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not receive death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. <laughs> well, verse 27, And he came by the Spirit, what? <laughs> How does that work? How does God work within their family to go visit the temple at the same time God reveals this person and says, you should go to the temple today. Amazing. Everyone this morning had an opportunity to deny the Holy Spirit's moving for you to come to the house of God. Amen. You could have said no. Right. You could have said, I don't want to go. You could have said anything. You could have said bad weather. You could have said any. You could have denied the Holy Spirit driving you here. Yes. But you didn't. Amen. And see, the fact that you didn't is just phenomenal to me. Amen. The visitors that come in just about every week, the Holy Spirit is causing them to want to come to this place. Because yes. it's not easy to find 90 Garfield Road. Yeah. <laughs> you don't just drive down the road and say, well, there's a church, I think I'd go there. Very often. <laughs> But here you are, from all different places, all different places. It's amazing, all over the country. Yeah. But God led us all here. Amen. This is beautiful. And Jesus shows up right. in the form of the Spirit. And hopefully, before you leave, you can say, man, I can really feel Jesus. I can really feel the fact that we were praising the Lord. His Word was being preached. The Spirit says to Simeon, you go to the temple. And just imagine this. <laughs> and he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, because they had to present Jesus to the, pre the, 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 the right. minister. <laughs> and they had to present it and it just so happens that the Holy Spirit brings Simeon at the same time. And it says, And when the parents brought in the child to do for him after the custom of the law, they took him up. And he Then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Now first of all, think of this. This baby is Jesus. This baby is God in the flesh. How would you, what would you do? What would you say? I mean, I'd say, Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. What would you say? You're holding the Messiah. You know, for, first of all, I would be like, no, 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 no. You hold him, Jessica. You hold him. I'll just go over and touch him. Because I would be afraid I'm going to hurt him. 
But I'm sure that even if you dropped him, he's God. You know? So I'm sure it'd be alright. I mean, I'm, but I mean, he takes the baby and he's like, oh, oh. I, I just imagine, well, how would you how would you react? I don't know. He's holding the Messiah of the world. This baby grows up and he dies on the cross for the sins of all of humanity from the beginning of the world all the way to the end. He takes all their sin and dies for it and pays the price. Thank the Lord. What an infant. What a just imagine holding the Messiah when I get to heaven. No joke. I think Pastor Carl said this too. Pastor Carl said, I'm going to be at Jesus' feet. Well, I said, I'll meet you there. <laughs> no joke. I'm telling you, I don't know what kind of strength we're going to have when we get to heaven, but I just about fight for that spot. <laughs> but there's not going to be fighting in heaven, praise the Lord. But more than likely, all of the things and all of the problems that you have with your body are going to cease. My shoulders could work again. I mean, praise the Lord. Maybe your illnesses will just, I mean, just imagine. Again, the pharmaceutical companies probably make a billion dollars from just this congregation. <laughs> Praise God, like I said, there is no pharmaceutical companies in heaven. They're going to be out of business. Praise the Lord. There's no sickness. There's no pain. You can wake up in the morning and say, I have no excuse but to go see Jesus today because I feel great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm looking for the time. So he's holding baby Jesus. So he took him up, verse 28, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people. Hallelujah. I mean, he's like, you know what? I know that my Redeemer was born. Amen. How did he know? How did he know? The Spirit of God will tell you and direct you, and it directed him straight to Jesus. That's exactly what's happened to everyone here this morning. The Spirit spoke to you and said, let's go. Let's go. Let's hear the Word of God. And now you've heard the truth. You've heard the Word of God. It should bring you joy yes. just to hear the Word of God. Yes. Because Jesus is more than just a baby. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus yes. is Emmanuel. Jesus is God with us. Jesus is your Redeemer. Jesus is the Word. Everything that we've said here was written and anointed by Christ Jesus. Yes. Because He's the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and this is His Word. Amen. A lot of people will say, but men wrote that. Well, men who were blessed by the Holy Spirit of God to write down God's words. Amen. Just like He anointed this gentleman to go and see the Messiah, Jesus. Just like God spoke to you and said, I am giving my life up for Christ Jesus. Amen. I surrender all. That's a big deal. Yes. That is a very big deal. Have you surrendered all? Imagine Him. He was waiting to see Messiah. He says, again, verse 30, For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of how many people? All, All people. Not just the Israelites. Everybody. Including everybody who was there at that time. The people who were in times past. And even us today. It's all people. It's all people. Whosoever will. Whosoever shall call upon the name shall be saved. It's not just the elect. It's everybody. Praise the Lord. It says, verse 32, and light, to lighten the what? Gentiles. Oh, I mean, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. He is the light. He is our salvation. If you're not as excited as I am, I mean, I just don't know what to do with you. I'm just, a, I don't know. I mean, Praise the Lord. I got so excited I dropped my glasses. I don't even know what's next. Somebody read the message. Hold on just a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for these. Amen. Verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things. 
things which were spoken of him might be like, oh my goodness, he's going to actually save the Gentiles too? And Simeon's like, watch my hand, this is the right answer. I mean, praise the Lord. So he says this, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, behold, this child is set for the what? Oh, wow. Uh, again, of many in Israel, the fall and the rise. Meaning this, they and us, we have an opportunity to receive Jesus yeah. as our King. Many people have not, and that has led to their doom. That's right, but for us, we are rising. Verse, uh, continue verse 34. And for a sign which shall be spoken against Yea, the sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Meaning this. I mean, think of it. We've even said, Jesus is the Word, and the Word is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword that's able to go in and cut asunder, meaning your spirit. He is the only one who offers redemption, salvation, and He's also the only one that you have to receive or you will have doom fall upon you. It says that the thoughts of many hearts may be what? May be revealed. Do you know people that claim that they're following Jesus, but you truly know they have no regard whatsoever for Jesus? They don't talk like a follower of Jesus. They don't act like a follower of Jesus. They don't worship like a follower of Jesus, but yet they say that everything's okay. Christ Jesus knows the difference. Amen. Three more verses. And there was one Anna. A, what? That means that she told people about Jesus. Amen. What is a definition of someone who stands up in front of people and tells them about Jesus? A pastor, a minister. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phil. Of the tribe of Asher, which the tribe of Asher is down at the bottom of uh, Israel, she was of great age. That means that she was probably, well, I'm not going to reveal to you because, I mean, I don't know what great age is, but we're going to look here at a number and maybe the tax guy back here can do some math for me and find out how old it is to say that you have a great age. I try my best not to know your age, but not, what, notice this. It says of what age? Of a great age. Right? So if you live longer, you're, you're, you're great. Praise the Lord. So it says that she was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from what? Her virginity. She stuck around with her husband and says this, and she was a widow of about what? Years. Yeah, so don't show your hands, but if you're over 84, then you're a great age. That's a great age for you. It says, uh, which departed not from the what? She constantly went to church. She wanted to be where people were meeting God. She did what? It says, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. You're saying, but that's her. I can't do that. A little bit of a, a little bit of a, 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 not Spanish, but French. Au contraire, mon frère. You can do what she's doing. You can fast and pray. You can seek the Lord. You can come to the church and worship Him. She did it. You can do it. Don't give me your excuse. Give it to God. Amen. I think I said this before, but Rick was in a church with me a couple of churches ago. This gentleman kept calling me every Sunday. I can't come because of this. I can't come because of that. I mean, it was like six months. He gave me a choose every Sunday. How can you work all week and then Sunday you're sick every day? Yes. <laughs> or you just don't feel good that day. You make it to work. You're never late. You work all good. Day. You get your paycheck. Everything's fine. But someday... Oh, I'm sorry. I just can't make it. I'm just wore out. Are you kidding me? Who's your God? I'm not trying to force people to come to church because I don't 
want that. I want you to come of your own free will. Because if you come to church because you feel obligated, that's the wrong reason. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's the wrong reason. If you come to church because you're wanting to meet Christ Jesus in spirit, then He'll show up. Amen. Doesn't the Bible say this? Seek and ye shall find. Amen. Knock and it shall be open unto you. You seek Jesus, you're going to find Him. I used to have one person at one of my churches and you know what they did? Every time they walked in the door, they looked for problems. <laughs> Pastor, you know, they forgot to take out the trash. Pastor, you know, somebody spilled something on the carpet. Pastor, I need to talk to you because you know what? I don't like the music. Pastor, I need to talk to you. I mean, this they felt was their calling from God to let me know everything that was wrong. You know, that's not your calling. Right. <laughs> that's not your calling. Believe me. Believe me. That's not your calling to complain. No. There's a wonderful church down the road and they'll take all kinds of complainers. <laughs> but this one, you're supposed to see Christ Jesus yes. every time you come Amen. into the doors. I'm just about over. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And she was a widow but she served God with fasting and prayers. And she coming in that instant. Think of it. The Lord had her be at the temple. She was always there praying and fasting. But she got there at the same time Jesus was there. And it changed her life. But she was a prophetess. Meaning she was waiting for this day. Amen. Are you waiting for Jesus? Yes. Man, are you? Can you just say, I want more of Jesus. I want His blessings. Amen. I want His joy. I want Jesus. And she coming in, verse 38, and she coming in, in that instance, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of Him to all them that looked for what? Redemption, Redemption in Israel. I mean, she's like, I've seen a redemption. I've seen a that's going to die for the sins of all humanity. You better serve Him and make Him your King if you want redemption of your sins. Amen. Is this beautiful? Is this beautiful? Are you seeking the Lord Jesus? Are you seeking God in the Spirit? Do you want more of Him? God, I think we told this the other day on closing. God doesn't like to share with other gods. God wants to be your one and only true love even more than anything else on this planet. Yes. Anything else. Any, anybody else. He wants you to love Him more. Do you love Him? Yes. Well, sh let's show Him that we love Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one more song of closing. And when we sing this song, I want you to remember this. You need to love one another as much as you love yourself. Amen. Now, after the service, here's the deal. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior to the point to where you want Him so much, you come with me, we'll talk right here, and we will pray so that you can know for sure that you have been saved from your sins. Amen. And by being saved from your sins, you're saved from the penalty of your sins, and the penalty of your sins is death. Amen. Jesus paid for the penalty for your sins, but unless you accept Him as your Savior, you're going to have to pay for your own sins. Amen. You'll have to go through what Jesus did. If you don't want to go through that and be separated from God, not for three days, forever, then you better come and meet me right here. Amen. As you leave, we have been doing our best to make sure that we are loving one another. Uh, 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 we have uh, The churches went out of their way to make sure that someone was blessed. And if you want to give to make sure that we continue to bless others who are in need. I would like for you, if the ushers are going to stand back in the back, you go and you drop something there in that usher bag and say, God, I want to bless someone as much as you bless me. Yeah. Not everybody gets to have things go smooth. I, I mean, 
I don't know. Uh, I think Don the other day was talking about a gentleman whose life was perfect. He kept saying, my life is perfect. Everything's wonderful. I got houses and beach houses and all this stuff. And he just tried himself to make it look like that he was the perfect person. And then they found out he was lying all the time. He didn't have anything. He was broke and miserable. Huh? Uh, well, you know, the thing is, is God's blessed every one of us. Amen. If you want to bless somebody else this Christmas season, please put the uh, money in the little offering.